popular with people because they're cute, intelligent, and personable. They're also endangered, and officials say between 10 and 15 baby sea otters, called pups, are separated from their mothers each year near California, many times because of storms. So two aquariums in the state have teamed up to rescue them and pair them with surrogate or substitute mothers. They've been able to do this once so far, and the goal is to eventually return the pups to the wild. Why not keep them around? For one thing, a program manager says it's expensive. Because they eat 25% of their body weight each day in seafood, it costs $40,000 to feed one otter for one year. That's thousands more than average groceries for a family of four humans each year with inflation. So the aquariums are looking for help funding the project. They also say the animals don't get a lot of human interaction, in part because they're very territorial, like wolverines in water. But sea otters play an important role keeping a delicate ecosystem in balance, so officials say rehabilitating them to return there is well worth the effort. Hello, my name is Carl Azus. Today is April 19th, 2024, a day that recalls the who cares, Fridays are awesome. Thanks for taking time to hang out with us on the world from A to Z. Back in 1871, a volcano named Mount Ruang erupted in Indonesia. The mountain collapsed into the sea, creating a tsunami and killing hundreds of people. And authorities there are warning that volcano's violent history could repeat itself. The 2400 foot high Mount Ruang has been erupting repeatedly this week, with explosions getting stronger since Tuesday. The Reuters news agency says it sent lava and ash miles into the air, and that's led authorities to evacuate hundreds of people from villages in the region because even though no one had been hurt by the time we produced this show, many would be at risk if part of this thing breaks off into the water and triggers a large tsunami wave. That happened a little more than five years ago when another volcano in Indonesia erupted and broke down. According to the Associated Press, more than 11,000 people who live near Mount Ruang have been told to evacuate their homes, but only a fraction have actually done it. Indonesia has dozens of active volcanoes, more of them than any other country in the world, and its position along the Pacific Ring of Fire has always made it a hotspot of volcanic activity. Roughly 5,000 people live in the city of Muleshoe, tucked away in the Texas Panhandle, where the most popular attractions are a statue of a mule named Old Pete and the world's largest mule shoe. The point is, this isn't the kind of place you'd think would be at the heart of an international cyber attack, suspected of being carried out by hackers that have cooperated with a sophisticated Russian military intelligence unit. But a new report says this city's water treatment facility computer system was attacked by suspected Russian hackers in January, causing a water tank to overflow. The city manager said it overflowed for about 30 to 45 minutes. The question that comes to mind is, why a water treatment facility and why in a place like Muleshoe, Texas? Right, it's a great question. Gus Serino is a cybersecurity expert focused on the vulnerability of public water systems. An organization may think we're kind of too small, we're not a high enough strategic value for some nation state adversary to come after us. However, victims are finding that they are affected simply because of the technology that they have that's sitting unprotected on the internet and findable and exploitable. In the report published by the cybersecurity firm Mandiant, cyber experts say that a Russian intelligence unit known as Sandworm is involved in an online persona called the Cyber Army of Russia Reborn that claimed credit for the attack on Muleshoe. There was also suspicious activity targeting public water systems in three other West Texas cities, Abernathy, Hale Center, and Lockney, according to officials. The Russian hacking group posted images online claiming to show how it was able to break into the industrial computer systems of Muleshoe and Abernathy and manipulate data entries in the system. We've got to make work a lot harder for these attackers. Deputy National Security Advisor Ann Neuberger says it's not clear what message the Russian hackers were trying to send, but that much more needs to be done to beef up cybersecurity defenses of water systems around the country. In the Texas panhandle, the cyber attacks did not cause any significant damage, but experts fear future attacks could be worse. 
In the past, the Russian government has denied being involved in cyber attacks by the Sandworm hacking group. News media are waiting to see if Moscow comments on these latest accusations. Meanwhile, the U.S. government is telling America's water plants to beef up their online security, but there are concerns that many don't have the manpower or the money to do it. On this date in world history. On yesterday's show, we told you when Paul Revere warned that the British were coming, and that's exactly what they did on this date in 1775. British forces that had marched into the Massachusetts towns of Lexington and Concord began exchanging gunfire with colonial militiamen in what would be the beginning of the Revolutionary War. The Americans won the battles and eventually the war, gaining their independence from Britain. The Oklahoma City bombing took place on this date in 1995. A truck carrying explosives detonated at the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building, killing 168 people and wounding hundreds of others. It was an act of domestic terrorism, meaning it was carried out by Americans, and two men were convicted of the attacks in 1997. And on April 19, 2011, Fidel Castro stepped down from his last official role in Cuba's Communist Party. He'd held various positions in the island nation's government since 1959. Upward and out. Which of these nations has the largest population in Africa? Algeria, Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa. Though Algeria is the biggest in terms of area, the African nation with the largest population and one of the largest economies is Nigeria. A population of more than 230 million, but 40% of Nigerians live below the poverty line, which makes it even more significant that a student has found a unique way to recycle plastic and earn some money in the art world. Growing up, Aluwa Joanlo Adeyemi saw her mother discard the large plastic kegs of cooking oil that she used for her catering business. If she, I feel whenever she's throwing them away, it affects us and it pollutes our environment because it's, it turns like seeds in the gutter. Adeyemi was bothered by the thought of adding waste to landfills in a city where only a small fraction of garbage is recycled. So she turned the jugs into faces and incorporated them into art pieces. Adiemi cleans out the jugs with soap and water and cuts the tops off. Then she heats the plastic and forms them into the shapes she wants. And finally, painting. The colorful masks become the heads of the figures in her paintings. She uses fabric and string to add texture and dimensions. The marketing student shares her work on Instagram and has exhibited her work in Lagos. Some of her pieces have sold for over $1,000. From the prairie state of Illinois in the city of Oak Forest, we welcome Miss Stavrakis or Stavrakis's class today. I hope I said that correctly. Great to see y'all at the Braun Educational Center. Moving out to the city county of Butte, Montana, we arrive at Butte Central High School where Mr. Edgar's class is online and amazing. And from Phoenix, Arizona, it's Mr. Gonzalez's and Miss Delilah's classes that are watching at Morris K. Udall Middle School. Here's a side of the Atlas robot from Boston Dynamics you probably haven't seen before. Fail. The company has a new and improved robot coming out, so it's retiring the machine that's been in service for 11 years. It's decided to celebrate Atlas's accomplishments with an awesome blooper reel. There was a lot of trial and error. Some things worked, some didn't. But no matter what Atlas did or how successfully it did or didn't do it, its videos always went viral. You could say it was automatic. One small step for a robot, one giant leap for technology. Those who are humanoid at its dynamic human likeness might say, at last, it's leaving, but it robe brought a lot to the table it jumped on and fell off of, blurring the lines between man and machine and making a battery of advancements exceeding anyone's ability to dance the robot. I'm Carl Azus. It means the world to have you watching the world from A to Z.